Thank you, Tulu. In March, Acting President Yemi Oshinbajo was on official visit to Akwa Ibom State. At a town hall meeting, he made it clear that it was necessary for oil producing companies in the Niger Delta to relocate to states where they have operations. That's what Business Week states on this occasion. To discuss the issue is my guest, Victor Ohai, a public affairs analyst. Victor, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Victor, review for us the economic and social condition in the Niger Delta before the time that the vice president made this remark. Well, um, <clears throat> in order to be able to do that properly, we need to go back a little more um, to the, um, if you like, the um, problems that were in the Niger Delta, the blowing of pipelines from the days of MEND. Um, at about 2009, the former administration struck a deal, the amnesty deal, which, which um, brought back peace to that region. Um, but as soon as the elections were over, um, you know, there was an upsurge, a groundswell again of, you know, um, blowing of pipelines. And we had new militant groups like the Niger Delta Avengers, Avengers, you know, coming into the scene. And that, of course, was beginning to threaten the current administration, almost crippling uh, the economy. And I think it was in the light of that that the, the acting president, then um, vice president, Simba Joe, uh, decided to do a tour of the Niger Delta <clears throat> region to talk with leaders, with the leadership, you know, of, of the communities and all that. And um, so, I, and, and that sort of restored some normalcy because we was able to extract commitments from them that there will be no more, as we have seen up until, until the recent threat about resumption later in the year. Okay, Please. okay, okay. Now, so, let, let, let's, let's <clears> take it this way. It is almost six months since that statement or well, directive, you well, know, was given. Ha, has there been, you know, changes in the area? Has anything positive happened well, in the direction but, of the yeah. oil firms? By, by directive, I assume you're talking about the particular one that stood out, that the vice president made, where he yes. said that the uh, oil, oil companies oil and should, gas firms. Yeah, yeah, should relocate their headquarters yeah. to so the Niger Delta. Yeah, states within the well, uh, not much. You recall I just said that there's a threat of blow up of resumption again in in in, in november they gave us a date um, um it, it's true that it might take some you know um a lot some logistics to move but it is not anything that is too serious if they are truly sincere about it obviously from what we can see nothing has happened so far to the best of my knowledge um, and that's because sometimes when government makes statements like this, um, there are times when you are not even sure whether they're just playing to the gallery just to cool people down or whether they, they actually mean it. Um, but what is more important is that the oil companies would usually read the body language. I'm not so sure the body language so far has indicated that they either move or else, if you know what I mean. Okay, now oil <clears> firms, <throat> they operate as private entities. Yes. They invest money, they want to make profit. You, we know about degradation of the environment there. But when the acting president made the statement, you know, was it an enforceable, you know, directive? Well, it's a statement that borders on moral suasion, if you like. Um, obviously, they're independent businesses. But don't also forget that many of them are in joint ventures with the federal government as well. Which That's means, the, the NMPC. Yes, yes. You know, so, um, which means to a very large extent, uh, some of these can be enforceable. But, to, uh, in, but, and again, because oil is strategic here, um, you, don't want to f you don't want to offend the federal government. They're partners. They cannot, it's not totally 100%, because one government policy can, you know, destabilize any oil company. So, um, moral situation is it. You can't really say you must enforce it, but because that statement has been made, and because of the strategic security and social, political, and economic uh, implications of that directive, um, I expect that it is, the statement should have been enough to make them act immediately. Um, restiveness in the Niger Delta, it must have really worried the acting president for him to, you know, have made the Obviously. pronouncement. Okay, now 
this issue of um, resettling those uh, uh, militants, L let's talk about uh, operations of uh, illegal refineries. Along the line, it was said that modular refineries would come upstream you know, to replace yes. these illegal yes. uh, refineries. Yes. So what about that? It should have been also a way, you know, to bring them up to date. No, true. I mean, some of us have been talking about this for a very long time now. And we've been requesting that, we've been saying that these people are doing these things illegally. Obviously, they know one or two things. They can refine, maybe not as finely as proper refineries. And what should be done is to have modular refineries and some sort of way of converting them, you know, to be legit, you know, so that instead of fighting them, assimilate them and work with them. Now, a pronouncement has been made to that extent. To what extent this has been done, I don't know. Modular refineries, by their very nature, are not things that require so much. It's not, they're not, some of these things are small and they're movable. We've seen them in other countries. I know that they're not like the big, humongous thing that you have in, in Portacot right now and, and in Wari. And, and so I expect that some sort of movement should have started in that direction. Um, again, some of the conditions that were given along those lines too were not that favorable. But I expect that if there's sincerity on the part of government, by now or before the end of the year, we should have started seeing something happening in that direction. Either that the, those modular refineries, uh, that they've started you know, importing them. I also expect that beyond just making the pronouncement, um, if government is able to provide some sort of loan, because obviously refineries are profitable. Okay, okay, okay. So, so before we round up, yes. going forward, looking ahead, what do you see happening in the Niger Delta? I mean, to the oil companies, to the communities, and to the indigenous. What's the way forward? Well, uh, the way forward, the way I see it is, what the, federal, what the acting president requested for, if it's implemented, will surely bring about even more changes because there is no way a headquarter of an oil company, even if it's a temporary one, will be in any of the Niger Delta communities that that community will remain the same because it will involve movement, it will involve construction, the roads have to be made good to those locations, um, buildings will have to come up where they have to reside, even if not buildings, hotels and all of that. It will change the economies of those localities. I would expect the government to match its words with action and enforce it. And if that is done, I see a lot of CSR projects coming up. I see things that will actually transform the lives of those communities. So I want to say that the federal government should revisit it and take seriously the threat of the Avengers that say that from November they are going to start another round of whatever it is. You know. And if that is done, um, I, I, I think that they should do that quickly take, I mean, be proactive and not begin to be reactive after the fact when these things start happening. Okay, uh, thank you later. very much, Victor Ohai. Let's leave it there. Thank you. For I've been me. speaking with Public Affairs Analyst Victor Ohai, who has been looking at the directive issued by acting presidents way back in March that oil firms operating in the Niger Delta should relocate their head offices to states within that region where they have operations. Back to you, Tulu.